In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a glass material and begin rendering glass surfaces. Now, overall in Redshift with Maya, it is fairly simple and quick to do this. You just need to tweak a few properties depending on what type of glass you have, and you'll get some amazing results right away. So here I have a scene set up with a few objects, and we're going to use them for testing. And I also have a dome light that has a HDR image applied onto it, so we can use it for lighting. So currently all of these objects have a default Lambert material applied onto them. So if I go ahead and render, here's what they're going to look like. So let's go ahead and set up our first and only glass material and we'll just tweak properties depending on which object we're working with. So I'm going to go to Hypershade and let's create a Redshift material. And let me regraph this. And I'm going to name this Redshift Glass. So the first thing I'm going to do inside the uh, property editor is I'm going to change BRDF to GGX. This is a reflection model to the updated version. And I'm going to keep Fresnel type to IOR. In the previous tutorials in Redshift that I showed you, I changed this to metalness in order to use it with a metalness workflow PBR. But for glass, I keep this at IOR. And what IOR stands for is index of refraction. And this controls how much light is deviated when it bounces off the reflective material. And it's going to allow us to change this number and get some different glass results. So with these properties as they are, let's go ahead and apply them to our glass surfaces. So I'm going to come over to the wine glass first. Let's go ahead and zoom in closer. I'm going to right click on it and let's assign our existing material, which is going to be redshift glass. And let's do a render. And also going to go ahead and uh, apply IPR so we can see in real time as I change settings inside the material editor. Now I'm going to use the attribute editor to change settings for that glass material. So I'm going to select the glass and then go to attribute editor and then click over to the, the glass material tab. All right, so the one property that you need to adjust in order to make glass render as glass is going to be under refraction and it's this weight property. As soon as you change this, you will begin to see glass render. So if I do a low, a low value, let's say 0.1, it's gonna start getting something there, but the best value to use for glass is closer to one. Now you can only use anything from zero to one. So if I input one, right away it's gonna give me glass. Now usually for glass, I like to go a little lower, not too much, like 2.95, but let me show you some other values. So if you do 0.8 closer to one, you can see that it's now rendering glass. Let me zoom in a little closer. But you can see a low value of 0.8, it's giving you that little foggy, hazy look. So again, I'm just gonna increase it to 0.95, maybe 0.98. And right, right there, you are getting glass already. And it's looking fantastic. Let's do 0.98. So just one value gives you glass. Now some other values that are useful along with refraction weight is of course roughness. So depending on how rough or shiny you want that glass to be, you can control this through a texture or maybe just using a value under reflection roughness. So if I change this to let's say 0.5, we're gonna get more rough property for the glass. So depending on what kind of effect that you're trying to achieve with the glass, once you've changed that weight, you can now adjust the roughness. So let me bump it down to maybe 0.1 or maybe even lower, maybe 0.05. So that gives you a bit of roughness in a glass surface. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, change it back down to zero. So we have just clear property for the glass. Now the other properties we can adjust is IOR. So 1.5 actually gives you everything you need and it's going to look good. But if I change this to a higher value, let's say three, it just gives you a, a slightly different effect of the glass. So if I go up to five, let's say, so again, just different effect. Now, if you turn it down lower from its default value of 1.5, let's say one, it's gonna be almost non-existent. So IUR has actually, a, there's a list for different properties and different values that you could input into IUR for depending what kind of surface you are trying to achieve. So uh, it's a little bit more in depth and you can do a search for IOR table list to see full values for different types of surfaces. But 
In our case, you don't really need to do that as long as you know that the default value of 1.5 will render pretty good glass and if you go higher, yeah, it gives you a different, slightly different result depending on what type of glass you are trying to render. So I'll stick with 1.5 right now. So the other few properties that I want to kind of cover is uh, ability to link to reflection. So this simply disables the roughness. So whatever roughness you input into reflection roughness controls both your reflection and your refraction. However, you can disable this and now you will have access to the roughness property for refraction. And this is how light is bending and distorting your reflections. So you can go ahead and disable this and now you have control for roughness refraction and then you have property to control roughness under reflection. So this will, again, maybe a little bit more advanced if you're just beginning, but you can now control more values depending on the look of glass you're trying to achieve. So I'm going to go ahead and disable this, and this value will now be grayed out. And the samples count, that simply allows you to increase the quality of your render and the amount of samples that is being rendered. So I usually leave it to 8, uh, and then you can increase it for a better quality render, or you can also do this in render settings. But for now, I usually leave it at 8. And again, you right there, you have some nice looking glass already with just few properties changed. Now let's apply this glass surface, this glass material to some other objects. So we can test a few more things. So here I'm going to come over to this object and uh, we're only going to apply it to the cylindrical shape. So if I go ahead and delete it temporarily uh, inside, there just a little small scene I have set up. So let's say everything is solid but this right here, I want this to render with glass. And let's see what that's going to look like. And there's one setting that I want to show you to allow this to render properly and correctly. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let me apply this material onto this shape, onto this mesh. So I'm going to right click, let's assign our existing material class. So let me go ahead and zoom in. So now we have a little scene set up in here and it's sort of rendering correctly, but you can see that it's actually distorting and changing the shape and I'm almost bending the light and making the meshes bigger and kind of distorting them and scaling them to the sides, kind of exaggerating their scale on one axis. And that's uh, just the way the glass is working right now, the way we have it set up. So if I delete this glass temporarily, you can see now I have correctly scaled meshes and just that refraction for the glass is distorting them. So there's one property inside the material that you can enable to make this look better and correctly. So let me go to glass tab and you will find this property under refraction and it's this thin walled right here. So as, when I click this, it will render whatever is behind glass correctly. So this is sometimes useful depending on, again, what type of object you are creating and how you want to render that glass. Sometimes you may want to have this effect. Usually you don't if it's more realistic scene and have this enabled, will render those objects behind the glass capsule more correctly. And then let's go to one more uh, object right here. Uh, this is just, uh, I've set up, like for example, a solid wall with some glass, like a glass window showing through. So let me apply this material only to this face right here. And actually what I have is I have two faces. I have one in the front, one in the back. So, uh, and I'll show you, we can have double faces that have the same material, or we can have just one face with the glass material. And it will kind of uh, make a difference in how it renders. Uh, you can have one or the other and uh, it all depends on the properties and the material how you set them up. So I'm going to select those two faces. Let me apply the same material. And let's zoom in a little closer so we can see. So behind this uh, glass panel, I have two objects set up so we can see what uh, the kind of the refraction is going to be doing through our glass. And let me just position it a little bit better. And let's go into the glass material. So using all the properties that I showed you, you can now kind of go through and see how you want this glass to render. So the only properties I have changed so far is the weight. And then everything else is now default. So let me see, you can change the weight now based on this glass panel, this glass window. Let's say I want 0.8, make this glass a little bit more hazy. 0.5 will make it more kind of solid almost, semi-transparent, so 0.9. 0.95, let's go back up. Then maybe I can try thin walled. Thin walled just gives you a different effect. So then I can come over here and uh, maybe we can adjust the IOR. If we go a little higher, it gives you a little slider, more dense glass. 
let's go higher to five. Let's go back down to 1.5. Uh, then I can also go ahead and uh, link or unlink. So I get access to the roughness property for refraction and then roughness for reflection. So I can control those two values separately, for example. So maybe I can do 1.2 for this, make the glass reflection more rough. And then I can even control my refraction to roughness also with a different value. So depending again, based on just on the glass that I want, maybe thin walled, see how that looks. Turn that back on, maybe turn that off. See what that looks like. That means that I need to turn down my roughness. So just going to go back and forth and see which result gives me the best option. And of course, I don't have to have two panels, two faces. I can go ahead and maybe select this face back here and just delete it. I do have a gap right here. So maybe let me go ahead and close that up really quick so we don't see that black area. So let me just uh, snap this uh, to this edge right here. And then let me come back to the front again and then maybe just work with one face for the glass. So let's go back into the properties. And again, I can continue to adjust. Let me turn this down to roughness to zero. You can see almost non-existent, but if I turn down IOR, for example, uh, it's beginning to harder to see, but it, you can now see more glass right here. Again, I can just continue to adjust a lot of these properties. Maybe thin wall will look better. It will not. You can see now it's thin wall and actually remove some of the objects and kind of cuts them off. So maybe I want to turn that back on. Maybe change the weight. Maybe go back to IOR. Maybe in this case, it might actually be better if I go ahead and link to refraction, click this off and control my roughness uh, for different parameters for reflection and refraction. So that's all you really need to adjust the glass, kind of going back and forth depending on the results that you're trying to achieve. I'm gonna go ahead and reset some of these back to default. And uh, there's one more property I'm gonna show you to maybe change in the tint to the glass of how colorful the glass is. So let me change it back to 1.5 and let me come over to the glass, to the wine glass. Let's zoom in a little closer. So if you wanted to change the color of the glass and uh, actually let me go ahead and turn off thin wall because it doesn't look right for this type of surface, this type of object. So if I turn that off, now it's gonna render more correctly. And uh, if I come over to the diffuse area, this is the color that's on the glass right now. So I can change how colorful the glass looks by changing the color in the diffuse property. So if I wanted, let's say more blue, more teal. So you can see that it's now we're getting a little bit of color tinting in the glass itself. This uh, might be a nicer effect if, depending on the type of glass you're creating. So overall, creating a glass material and is very simple. And then you have these just a few parameters to tweak to how the uh, glass is rendered. And you will achieve pretty great results very quickly.